morning, everybody. This is Mike with On Point Preparedness. Haven't done a live stream this early before, but I wanted to get this out because I've got a really busy weekend. Uh, this is going to be a sign of the times update, building on some other warnings that I had shared in the past uh, regarding uh, China and the revolt slash rebellion that's brewing there, as well as uh, global food shortages. The two actually are tied hand in hand. Um, if you recall, China has a zero policy regarding the pandemic, and so they're shutting down major cities. Uh, Jinlin was one. Um, right now, it's Shanghai. And in Shanghai, this zero policy means that uh, even like essential grocery stores are shut down. Uh, people have to get their food delivered. And if you know how many people, there's like millions upon millions of people that are under this lockdown. And when you try to do that and say everyone has to have their groceries delivered, there's naturally going to be shortages. And, and now people are legitimately starving in their homes and there is full on revolt going on in the cities. So again, in terms of sign of the times and this global rebellion that I've been speaking of, uh, China is definitely on the radar. Uh, and not just in Shanghai or Jinlin or some of these other major cities, you know, people across China are paying attention. And as we've seen in prior years, whenever they start to hear about these lockdowns, they were uh, preemptively starting to prepare and panic buy and, and get, you know, lots of grains and, and sacks of, of wheat and things like that from the stores. Again, that was reactive when they were starting to hear these lockdowns. Now that they're seeing it more and more frequently, I'm sure that there's going to be a push more and more across to all of China to uh, stock up proactively instead of reactively. So I want to show you a whole bunch of footage coming out of Shanghai. Uh, there's also food riots that are happening in Peru. There's food riots happening in um, Sri Lanka. And overall, the big message here is that, yes, food riots have begun, uh, not here yet in the United States or some of the other first world Western countries. Uh, but you have to think about the progression here. Inflation prices are continuing to creep up and the food riots happen um, when your lowest income level of people are boxed out of food. That, that's, that's the only threshold you need to uh, you know go over. And so what we're seeing start right now is that your poorer countries are starting to engage in food riots because there is a tiered system in terms of you know wealthiest countries to um, the most impoverished countries. But then what we will start to see is in the better off countries, as there's you know various classes of people, then we'll start to see it in the Western nations when uh, we have you know the poorer population start to get boxed out of food, and you know we pretty much are starting to see that. We're starting to see bread lines increase uh, across the United States, and it's not hidden. It's all mainstream media news that's starting to cover these things, and so I find it very interesting that there's a lot of people uh, that I know personally that are not preppers, uh, that are not into Bible prophecy, none of these things, and I'm starting to hear whispers of people saying, "You better stock up." People are talking, because I mean, Biden talked about the food shortages. Justin Trudeau talked about the food shortages. Uh, it, it's it's not hidden anymore. And so really the threshold that people have to go over in order to really start preparing for this is all about that, um, that psychological principle of dealing with grief or denial. You know, people are seeing it on the news right now, but a lot of people are still in denial. But then there's going to be a time when people see enough signs that there's going to be an acceptance period and they'll say, OK, we really need to start doing something. And so I think we're in the midst of this. I don't know what the timings are. You know, there's all these projections of people saying the summertime, the summertime, we're going to see food riots here in, in the U.S. or Canada or whatnot. Uh, some people are saying the end of 2022. Uh, some people are saying you know, next year. I, we have no idea. Uh, I think one of the. But the overall wild card is that we have these situations popping up left and right that no one ever really expected. And so a lot of these timelines are based on the current status of things. But who knows what the what the next thing is going to bring, which puts a wrench in, in everything. So again, uh, prepare in faith according to what the Lord convicts you of. And let's get on over here to some of the 
uh, little screenshots and uh, clips that I have to share with you. So first we're going to start in Shanghai. Uh, this poster says it's unbelievable. People were so desperate they broke curfew and looted a grocery store in Shanghai last night. Uh, food delivery apps were allowed to turn back on after, but the situation is unstable. Uh, reports of communities opening up their own local representative government. I mean, that's that's pretty huge. Uh, so let's take a look at this video. <laughs> that one is actually, if you want to call it peaceful, um, that's quote unquote peaceful. But uh, here, you know, you start to see the people rebel against uh, the authorities here. So hungry residents in Shanghai break out from their compound. I mentioned that to you um, a while back that, you know, there's compounds of apartment buildings that have common areas. They're basically blocked off by the CCP. And uh, you have here, you know, people breaking through. And I think this has been going on around six to seven weeks. So, you know, people really haven't been able to visit grocery stores for that long. They're even saying, you know, it's not even, it's not even a class issue. Uh, there's rich people and poor people that just aren't able to, to be um, getting food delivered. And so they're reaching their breaking point. Let's look at another video here, um, more on the ground footage. I mean, you could, it's, it's terrible. You can hear it in their voices um, th that they're panicked. Uh, let's just read here. Um, China, uh, unknown district of Shanghai. So maybe it wasn't, I guess, I guess the, the lockdowns are segmented. So I don't know if it was like all of Shanghai all at once. I think they did half the city and then another half the city. They're trying to break it up. Um, but this is after more than 10 days of lockdown. No food, no essential materials for residents. Many people were fighting for life and freedom, shouting loudly, I'm starving and dying, uh, and physically confronting the police. Uh, and so, you know, th These are big, big movements because, again, when you confront authority in China, there's severe consequences, and, and people have just reached that breaking point, as I alluded to in the other video. There's another one, another compound. And these are some interesting videos as well. And so they're saying that the, because of the lockdowns, the Chinese government is obstructing food trucks from getting into Shanghai. So there's these images of lots and lots of um, trucks that are backed up. Again, the entire economy shut down. I forget how many billions of dollars they're losing per month and, and really how this is going to affect the global supply chains even worse. But that, that clip is interesting as well as this. Let me just back it up here. Um, the quarantine people are starving, uh, but because of the logistics, right, you can't have enough people, delivery services, to get all the food out to everyone. And so because of the logistics bottleneck, you've got all this food um, spoiling. Uh, cra crazy, crazy footages here. And as I said, in, in relation to the global rebellion that's brewing and, and the toppling of, of governments, again, this is everything that we're going to see is going to be blamed on go government and this move to overthrow world governments, uh, whether it's the pandemic and everything that they've put people through with that, uh, the food shortages, it's, it's going to be blamed on government. Uh, Climate change is is uh, you know blamed on government and man you know in part uh, you know on, on the left side people will say it's uh, because of fossil fuels and it's man's fault uh, but then you're starting to hear people talk about um, uh, weapons climate weapons uh, and um, weather modification so it's going to be man's fault so again a lot of these things and people instead of people coming to repentance and seeking God, 
instead it will be blamed on man. You know, people are going to put the blinders up and not really see God in this picture. There, there's going to be a scapegoat for all of people's hatred to be poured out onto. Uh, just uh, some other tweets here. You know, my friend is starving in lockdown in Shanghai. They gave him six large head hail tail fish, hair tail fish, and some vegetables each week. No other food. He says the poor people just get vegetables, no fish if they get anything. Uh, and he's out competed at 5 a.m. every day for ordering food online. Uh, crazy, crazy things. Uh, again, this is. Uh, not sure which station this is, but this looks like a, a more um, established broadcast news station, again, talking about fighting over food supplies. Moving on, I'm not sure what district of China this is, but again, uh, really shows the people uh, fighting back against government, uh, not really even caring about authority. There's some graphs if you look up online in terms of the global food price index, and we are above global prices which started the Arab Spring. Uh, so again, th things are um, worse than they have been. Uh, switching out of Shanghai, talking about food shortages sparked by just inflation instead of lockdowns, uh, Peru and Sri Lanka are both very much in the news. So there's uh, this one's in Peru. There's lots of people demonstrating in the street, uh, but there's also food riots as well. So here's a video showing uh, food rioting in Peru, again, over rising food and gas prices. Take a look at this. There's just so much going on in the world, which again really isn't being covered uh, outside of a lot of internet journalists. Uh, here's some more footages of Peru. This is also Peru. Wow. Look at the crowds. I mean, that that is absolutely insane. I mean, this is what happens when across an entire nation, inflation gets this bad. <laughs> manifestaciones en el centro de Lima y estamos en vivo contigo Tiffany cuéntanos a qué hora empezaron a registrarse estas imágenes que estamos viendo en estos momentos en pantalla buenas noches
other videos here. So let's see. I think we've I think we've already seen this one. Uh, that's Peru, and here's uh, Sri Lanka. So again, same thing. Thousands are swimming in the streets. <laughs> and the island is suffering its worst economic crisis in decades. Again, uh, not as violent, peaceful protest, but still. There's been a lot of things going on in Sri Lanka as well. I think I have them in the next article. But they have faced, uh, let's see here, uh, as the title implies, suffers long power cuts as currency shortage makes fuel scarce. Uh, so I'm not going to go throughout this whole article, but if you go ahead and do some uh, searching on web browsers, they, I think it's now restored, but they cut all social media. So people weren't able to share what was going on. Um, there's huge power outage cuts. There's currency shortages. There's food shortages. There's fuel shortage. I mean, the list goes on and on. And again, um, these aren't the poorest of the poor countries even. There was a chart, which I, I now wish that I would have had up here. Um, but again, Peru, Sri Lanka, uh, they're, uh, they're, there's nations that are more impoverished than them. Um, that haven't gotten to this point, or at least we're not we're not seeing images of it. So again, we're going to start to see this happen in the poorest countries first, and then within the better off countries, we will start to see this happen in lower class. And in order for this to happen, you only have to box out the lowest um, large class of people. Because uh, then, when they have no other choice, when you know they can't go to bread lines and uh, that's not even functioning correctly, uh, this is what you get. And it's hard to—it's really hard to fathom these things for people, especially you know in America or some of the Western countries. We've never seen anything like this before. And so, again, as I alluded to in the beginning of this video, there really is these this stages of grief or stages of denial psychologically that people have to go through. You know, world leaders are talking about food shortages. Uh, it's on the mainstream media now. They're talking about food shortages. You've, <laughs> you've now. It's not just the prepper channels talking about food shortages. It's actually starting to spill over into um, a lot of moms' channels uh, that are into like homes, uh, homesteading, and healthy, healthy living, and healthy cooking. Now, now they're starting to talk about you know preparing. It, it's really spreading. And as in the, the stages of grief or stages of denial, you know, there's, I forget all the different stages, but psychologically you have to go through this grief period, you go through a denial period, uh, then you get angry, there's a period of anger, uh, which, which you're obviously seeing, and then there's, you know, a period of acceptance. And it really depends on when, when people get to a particular stage of that process versus when food when they can get food. You know, a lot of people before these riots happen, maybe they get to the acceptance state and they actually start preparing, which I'm seeing a lot of. Again, people that are not preppers, people that are not in the Bible prophecy. Um, but then, you know, when things get short and and people come into this anger stage or acceptance stage, I mean, that's when we're really starting to see like the food riots. People realize, oh, it really is that bad. And I can't get anything. And, and then at that point, it's too late. So again, prepare in faith. Uh, as I said, at least in Shanghai, China, I think some areas it's been a couple weeks. Uh, you, you should really think about, my, my recommendation is at, you know, at least three months of food. Uh, there's a lot of prepper websites in terms of you know, how you can get there on the cheap, uh, mostly by stocking up on grains first and foremost, and then supplementing that with like canned goods and things like that. But I think... That is a prudent thing to do. Again, I've talked about preparing in faith, not wasting all your money, not making huge, frivolent purchases, because that is prepping based on fear. 
uh, you should have a conversation with the Lord and ask what you should do that is prudent and according to your budget. And again, there's some people that may not have the funds to do that. And in your prayers with God, he may tell you to be still. And people that are preparing, he may link up with you and your faith is made whole. Uh, you know, within the body of Christ, there's going to be people that are preparing and maybe they're not preparing just for themselves, but they are preparing for those who can't prepare and the Lord brings things together. So the person that had faith to just be still and not prepare is following their faith. The person that is told to prepare by the Lord is preparing in their faith and faith is one. Faith is whole. Uh, it's very, very important. So let's uh, look at this. I thought this was a really um, good little uh, segment, infomercial type thing. Let's uh, have a listen here. 15% of the world's calories come from wheat. About a third of that, 15% of the world's calories come from wheat. About a third of that wheat comes from Russia, Ukraine. Russia has banned export of wheat. The wheat spring planting season is like now, this week. And there's not a lot of planting going on. So not only is the current wheat supply in Russia, Ukraine blocked up and cannot make its way to countries in Africa and elsewhere, but the future planting season is now significantly at risk. And again, that's 15% of global calories. And I, just to take a step back, the whole planet Earth operates on a 90-day food supply. Once we stop making food, humans run out of food in 90 days. And that's not just linearly across all nations. What happens is the most vulnerable nations lose their food supply first, and the richer nations buy that food supply to secure their population calories. And so you very quickly see a bifurcation happen where suddenly famine is a real risk. And we already have about 800 million people on Earth that are subsisting on below 1,200 calories a day. So this very quickly tips the bucket in a significant way in a number of countries that's going to be really awful. And that's just on the wheat supply and wheat planting problem. So again, just as I alluded to, it's going to hit the more impoverished nations first. That's why we're starting to see these problems arise in the other nations. Uh, but the better off nations, you know, we will start to see class divisions. Uh, here's Niger. I thought this was interesting. Again, talking, you know, real footage on the ground with real people, real farmers, uh, talking about their experiences with the fertilizer shortage, which we haven't come to realize the effects of yet. So we know there's a fertilizer shortage. Uh, a lot of farmers have been able to secure their fertilizers through contracts. Um, there's some that aren't, and they're going to be impacted. But again, it's not like the fields just instantly won't produce. Uh, you know, there may be a year where they get like a marginal um, crop yield, but then it's in the following year if if they're not supplementing that soil with the nutrients it needs, then then you start to have real problems. So again, that's why in, people, in terms of people talking about the timings and things, this is something that factors in where people say, if this continues for long enough uh, next year with the fertilizer shortages, this is going to be another big blow um, to global food insecurity. This rice field is almost empty this morning. The soaring price of fertilizer is choking Niger's farming economy. A bag of urea, which is the most common fertilizer in Niger, was sold for 18 euros last year. It now costs 34 euros, almost twice as much. Because of the price of fertilizer, I can't employ more people on this field. There should be a lot of people on the field, but all the money is used to buy the fertilizer. Otherwise, at least six people should work, not just two. Russian gas is one of the main components of this very fertilizer. As a direct consequence of the war in Ukraine, prices have risen even further, by 30% on top of the previous price increases. 30%, that, that is big. And lastly, uh, as I alluded to earlier, it, it, this stuff isn't hidden. Uh, I'm not going to play this reel, but uh, multiple times, uh, Tucker on Fox News, and there's other people as well, uh, have been talking about the food shortages. And again, it is it is this whole stages of grief. And, you know, there's a lot of people that see the information, yet they see decent amount of food in the stores. You know, there's a couple holes. As, as there, there's, <laughs> there's tons of videos on YouTube about uh, food shortages and lots of people are walking through the grocery stores uh, sh showing holes in the shelves, particularly in canned goods and pasta, which I don't think is any surprise. I think that's something that people gravitate too, in terms of uh, longevity of shelf life. So it, it really speaks to maybe common people are now starting to put back some things in their pantries and their basements. 
But again, it's, people are still in a state of denial where they're seeing relatively stocked grocery stores, but then they get this information on the news and it's not really meshing well. Um, and they're not really seeing everything that's happening around the world. So a lot of people are just loudly gagging like, ah, you know, it's probably not going to happen. But again, if we look at the signs of the times, what's happening globally, and again, not just looking at food shortages and supply chain issues, but everything that we've been seeing with um, the collapse of the currency, or at least uh, the, the precursors or movements that will collapse uh, currencies. As a, again, that was one of the problems, I think it was in Peru or Sri Lanka, they said there was a currency crisis. Um, we, we know that these things are coming. It's, it's really not a matter of if, it is, it is when. And we have no idea uh, what more things are in store in terms of uh, global tensions or war uh, that, that might expedite that process. So again, my prayer for you is um, twofold. Uh, that again, you pray to the Lord in terms of how you are to pre prepare in faith for these things and Again, we can't lose sight of the Great Commission in terms of ministering to lost souls. I think with more and more people coming to the realization that this stuff is happening and uh, is in the future, that you use this as a type of springboard to give them the gospel. You know, people are talking about this stuff and you can use this information that's being presented in conversation with someone and say, you know what? Bad things are on the horizon. Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior? And give them the gospel. Don't waste any opportunity to, again, fulfill the Great Commission, because it's every single one of the saints' duty to do that. So I hope this broadcast bless you. This is Mike with On Point Preparedness. Have a good weekend.